Here you can see that if we use this setup, it's literally twice as fast and we can also use a database that we're already familiar with to manage our vectors as well as our documents. I think for most of you out there building applications with large language models, using PG Vector is actually better than using a dedicated vector database like Pinecone or Weaviate. And now I've been working with large language models for about a year now and I think this image is a good overview of what a typical architecture looks like from a high level if you're building an app like this. And if you've dabbled with these models with retrieval augmented generation, then this should be familiar. And now from the start, about one year ago, I started to use Pinecone as my primary vector database because this was also a new concept for me. So I've never heard of vector databases, never worked with them. And Pinecone was put forward as the vector database for AI applications. So I started to work with that built all my applications for my clients around Pinecone. And now really what I've noticed over the past couple of weeks, as some of the applications that we're building are transitioning from proof of concept to production, where managing the data that is active in the vector database becomes more and more important, I've really ran into some issues where I had to reconsider my data pipelines and also my vector databases. And that pointed me to this article as I was doing some research on finding alternative ways of working with these factors. And here uh, I saw other people running into some issues as well and switching to PG Factor, which got me interested because PG Factor is essentially a, an extension for a PostgreSQL database to use factors in it and also perform similarity search. And now I'm already familiar with uh, PostgreSQL databases. Actually, I use DataGrip and have most of my projects for my clients where we need a database. I have them available in here in either a Postgres database or, or something similar. So that immediately caught my attention. And then I thought, okay, well, then, but what's the trade-off? If Pinecone is really a dedicated factor database, then it will probably be a lot faster, right? And that's when I found this really interesting comparison done by Superbase, here it outlined that PG Factor is faster than Pinecone. So then I thought, hey, really, what's the point of using a dedicated factor database in a separate environment, separate from all of my other projects, um, versus just using a database that I'm already familiar with? And since Langchain also has a PG Factor class, which works very well, I decided to start experimenting with this and see what the pros and cons are. So I have a document over here or a script, I should say, which I will share with you as well, where I run various experiments and I will share with you my insights, show you first how to work with the Pinecone index and then what that looks like if we do the same thing with PG Factor. And then I'll show you why I completely switched to PG Factor right now for all of my generative AI projects. And now to be clear, I'm definitely not an expert on this. So it could very well be that I just don't have enough information or knowledge about how to effectively work with Pinecone, but I'm just going to show you some basic examples that I think will be very relatable to you. And just from a speed and simplicity perspective, PG Factor is the clear winner for me. All right, so let's walk you through some examples. I'm going to load up an interactive Python session over here, and then we're going to load some data. So I have an ebook over here, the Christmas Carol, and let's load that up. So we're going to split all the documents and here you can see we have now taken this C or TXT file, which is in here, it's a huge ebook, and we have split it up into the documents. Now we're going to connect with my Pinecone account through the API key in the environment. And then I'm going to run this, which essentially says, hey, if there's a demo index, uh, you can load it. If not, we'll create one. I already have the demo index over here and we can now have a look at that, see what's going on. So if we now come to the Pinecone Data Explorer, we can see all of the factors here and the source and then also the text of the various chunks that have been put into it. Okay, so this is all basic Pinecone stuff. Now let's create a function that we can call to run a query to do, to perform a similarity search. And I'll also create a function that calculates the time it takes to run the function. And we can also specify a number of times that we want to run this function and take the average of the time. So let's see how long it takes if we search this pinecone index with uh, we have the query over here and it's just the, um, it's the first line of the ebook. And now we can see, okay, we can run a similarity search and we correctly get the first chunk of the book back based on the uh, first 
line over here from, uh, from the book that we put in. And then we can see that it took 0.53 seconds. All right. So that was the pinecone setup. I'm going a little fast, but this is just to show you how we set up this experiment. Now let's come over to the PG vector part. And if you want to follow this yourself, you can check out the repository that I will link in the description. Now let's take a collection name over here and also a connection string to connect to our database. And now we're going to create uh, the store similar to how we are just creating the pinecone vector store. Now we're going to use the Langchain PG vector one. And just by loading this and putting in the uh, connection to our database, I can now come over here and let's have a look at what we actually created. And this is one thing that I really like first and foremost about working with PG vector. We now um, have two tables and Langchain creates these automatically for you if you just put in the connection to your PostgreSQL database. So we have a collection name, which is the name that we just put in here. And then we also have a embedding table where you first of all have the collection ID, which maps to the UUID that you see over here. Then we have the embedding and we also have the original document in here. So we have a traditional structured SQL database, but it also has the vectors in here. And I will show you in a bit how this is just from a, an, an overview of what kind of data you're dealing with and what kind of data you have in your application is very effective. But let's continue now with the search to perform the similarity search and actually see what this difference in speed is. So now let's run this query again. And so this is another custom function to run the similarity search on the new PG vector object we created. And now let's run this and see how long it takes this time. All right, so we can see same result. It retrieves the first chunk of the, uh, the book and you can see that we're now at 0.29 seconds. So it's almost twice as fast. And really what I found is, so there is some variation every time you, you run these. So let's see, I can run, run this one, one, one more, once more and see oh, we're 0.23. Now let's come back to the pinecone one, run this one one more time. Let's see how long that takes. And now we're at 0.5 seconds. So really from these examples that we have over here, PG Factor is literally twice as fast. And that's really what I've seen uh, consistently being the case with the applications that, that I'm building right now. And um, that really, for me, defeated the purpose of using something dedicated like pinecone and why this is the case is explained to some degree in this document but it basically highlights that since you interact with all of these services using apis not necessarily the implementation and speed of the algorithm in the search becomes the bottleneck but the network connection over which the data is sent so by using an open source database like postgresql you can put your database essentially close to where your application is running. And this can reduce latencies. And now next, where I think PG Factor really shines is if we start to add more data to it. So let's say we have another TXT file. Let's load that up, split it up into chunks, give it a collection name too, and let's run that one more time. Let's see what happens over here. We can now come back to our database. We can refresh this and here we have another collection that's in here. And now we can come over here, refresh this. Notice we're now at 102 rows. And now we're at a lot more rows, adding more data to it. This just to me gives me a much better overview of what's actually in my application and thus also my client's applications. And if I compare that to the view that I have over here in the Pinecone console, I just really prefer having a dedicated application that I can use to go through my data and also not only query on the embeddings, but also on the documents, query on the collection ideas. And I just feel more in control this way versus if I come over here, it starts with a random vector that you get by default. Then it shows you some results. You can query by ID, but I don't store at the IDs. Otherwise you would need a separate database which kind of like defeats the purpose, right? So that 
I think summarizes my issues that I had with Pinecone. And now I am aware it probably has to do something with namespaces and configuring everything using namespaces accordingly to, for example, how I do this with uh, collections in here. But again, as I said, I just look at it from a speed perspective and a simplicity perspective. If I look at the examples over here, PG Factor wins in terms of speed. It's open source. And I also just like being able to open the database and see what's going on. And now one final thing that I want to show you, and this is really powerful. You can steal this from me. I built a custom PG Factor service uh, with a custom similarity search with scores that allows you to use Langchain and perform a similarity search over multiple collections. So out of the box, you can only uh, perform a similarity search on one collection, but this uh, service will allow you to do so over all of your data. So we can look at this uh, service over here, initialize it, and then we can run it and then run the query. And then it will use all of the data that's in here. Now, why is this useful? That is because right now what you can do is you can very easily add more data to the factor database and be in full control. So for example, let's see. I can use that same surface to delete collection one. So let's do that. Let's update this. And here it's instantly. So here you can see I can remove uh, those. I can remove those. And now that's gone. And now I can come in here, delete collection two. And again, it will be instant and it's gone. In a similar fashion, I can just re-upload that data to the database. Let's see. So we have all of our documents in here. Let's do it one more time and we create the first collection again. All right. So now we're back. I can reload this and here you can see now we have all of that data again. So it's a very effective way to manage your data. And really what I've found, once you, you get through the POC with projects you're working on, it becomes much more about upgrading and improving the data sets than it is about proving the application. So what you will naturally see is in the beginning, the client or whatever you're working on, it, you will have a fixed set of, of documents, of data that you want to put in there. You do some tests, you validate that this is, this is a cool idea and it works, but that, that is really where the actual testing starts and where continuous improvement of the data sets comes into play. This setup that you have over here works very effective for that. And you can even build your own UIs, GUIs around these delete collection and update collection functions, which is what I've uh, done using an Azure storage account with some webhooks to very effectively manage everything that's going on over here and just have one simple query that searches through everything. So if you're working on large language model applications right now and you're using a dedicated Vector database like Pinecone or Wi-Fi 8, I would highly recommend looking into PG Vector and at least give it a shot. See if it works for you, see if it makes sense for you. So how do you set up the PostgreSQL database? Well, what you can do is you can have a look at either Supabase, which I really like. Um, you can start for free and what you will get is you will get a managed Postgres database and you can enable the vector extension. And that is just for free. So that's one option. You can also do it like I do it locally right now, or just put it on a server, wherever you want to deploy it. Or what I do for most of my client pro projects, I use a managed PostgreSQL database through Microsoft Azure, because that's where I de deploy my apps anyway. So then it's all hosted in there. So those are just some ideas for you to start experimenting with it. It's also worth reading through this article, which I will uh, link to you as well. And that's really what I wanted to show you in this quick video. It's something I've been working on and I really use my YouTube channel as a way to communicate what I encounter in my work, what I learn, and then give that back to you guys. So if that sounds interesting to you, you wanna learn more about that, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And if you're interested in more AI lessons or lessons that I learned working with these generative AI projects, then make sure to check out this video next.